The EU's drug regulator is expected to authorize the first COVID-19 vaccines for the Omicron variant, although they do not target the latest strains. The adaptive vaccines made by BioNTech, Pfizer and Moderna will be discussed at a meeting of the European Medicines Agency on Thursday. This comes a day after U.S. health officials approved updates to COVID-19 vaccines that do target the latest strains of the Omicron variant. The tweaked booster shots could be available in the U.S. in a matter of days. EU authorities say they hope to approve a separate Pfizer vaccine adapted for the latest Omicron types in the fall. Here's more on why COVID-19 vaccines needed an update and how it's been done. To help fight off COVID-19, vaccines induce defensive measures in the body. Among them are the production of protective antibodies that can recognize and latch on to the surface of the coronavirus, especially its spike protein. That can stop the virus from docking onto cells to infect them and flag it up for destruction by other immune system defenders. But if the structure of the spike protein changes due to mutation, it can have consequences. The immune system might no longer quickly recognize the invader. Omicron has, over time, adapted to become all the more efficient for infecting human cells. There are a number of parameters and characteristics that make it a really difficult virus to deal with. One of which is because it has changed some of its surface structure by a mutation, and the spike has a number of changes. mRNA vaccines use snippets of genetic code to make the body produce the spike protein to stimulate an immune response to SARS-CoV-2. Rewriting the code is a pretty fast and straightforward process, and changing it changes the vaccine's associated spike protein. So why have Omicron-specific vaccines taken so long to arrive? This has a lot to do with two factors. Factor one, we're not sure that better adapting and refining the vaccine is genuinely going to afford a market improvement in protecting against future infections. And then, of course, at the level of the manufacturer, decisions have to be made. When do we bite the bullet and actually now produce a new vaccine? Experts hope messenger RNA vaccine technology will help us keep pace with new variants of SARS-CoV-2 as the virus continues to evolve. And here to break down the FDA's authorization of these new vaccines is Derek Williams from DW Science. So what is different about these new ones? Well, mRNA vaccines, they, they act kind of like software. That's, that's the, the comparison that's often, that's often made. And in, the, in that sense, if you, if, you, if you pursue that particular picture, then these are kind of patches on the software of the original mRNA vaccines that, that, that were made back in 2021. Um, they're, they're tuned to create not the spike protein from the original ancestral virus, which was first discovered in Wuhan, but instead tuned to the BA4 and BA5 subvariants of Omicron, which are the highly infectious subvariants that are currently hitting uh, nations all over the world. And so, so it's an update in that sense. It's a patch on the software, and but it's it's also it's it's not. There's there's another aspect of it in, as well, which is that the original formulations are going to continue to be in these new vaccines. It's mm -hmm. what's called a bivalent vaccine. So they're adding an extra ingredient to the mix, if you will. Mm -hmm. D does this make them more effective and, and even safer, or what's the case? Well, I don't, I don't think that there's any issues of, or questions, really great questions about the safety. Um, these, these mRNA vaccines have been given to hundreds of millions of people now, and the platform mm. has proven to be safe. And since the change that's being made is not really fundamentally to the platform, it's more of what you would think of as a cosmetic change to the, to, to the makeup of the vaccine itself. Um, I don't think that people are worried about, about the safety issues. The effectiveness still remains to be seen because this is all, you know, really, we're pretty far ahead of the curve in terms of we're, we're still reacting to Omicron. But we're, we're, we're having to do things in a very, very fast way, faster than we've ever actually done them before. And so we don't have a lot of effectiveness data yet. Well, the well, they keep, were trialed in mice. Keeping, keeping ahead is the, the hardest part, isn't it? Because, I mean, 
we, we could be in for another variant at some stage or another strain of a well, variant. Well, that's that's actually to be expected. We've, we've seen, what, four variants now that, that have succeeded. So we're getting one about every six months. And Omicron has been around now since last November, since 10 months. So, so experts are really expecting a new variant to pop up possibly as early as this winter, although, you know, nobody can predict the future. But this doesn't put us behind. It keeps us ahead. Well, it does, it, well it's, what it's doing is it's keeping us on track. We've been, we've been reacting to these, to these changes in the virus uh, too late and, and, and too slowly. And, and that's the, the strength of this particular platform, the mRNA vaccine platform, which is that it allows us to react much more quickly to changes in the virus. But, but we still have to get those things on track. And, and production, as we just heard also in that piece, is, is a big issue. Is that speed factor the, the, the key to ending the pandemic? Well, ending the pandemic is going, it, it doesn't matter how good the vaccines are and how quickly we can produce them if people don't take them. And, and I think vaccine fatigue is starting to play a really big role. We've got these wonderful new vaccines and everybody expects them to, 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 to do a particular job, but people still have to take them. And I think that that's going to prove to be a big problem moving forward. Derek Williams, DW Science, thank you very much for getting your take on the story.